Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the vlog. Gosh, it has been a hot minute. I have just been so busy. But my name is Kelly. I am a clinical fellow SLP working in an acute care hospital. And I'm going to take you on two days of my life. Um, it's pretty early this morning. I'm running a tad bit late. My supervisor is at ASHA this week, which means I'm taking over her caseload, which means I need to be at the burn ICU at 7.30 for rounds. And it's 6.52, so I'm gonna go make my breakfast real quick, take it to the hospital, get everything going, and hopefully dry my hair a little bit because it's a little bit crazy. But welcome. I haven't been here for a while because life, but here we go. A couple days in life as a medical SLP. Just trying to make it, just trying to survive right now. Work is a little bit crazy. I made it to the hospital. I got here on time, five minutes to spare. I got my list for burn rounds, um, I'm ready to go. So today's gonna be a great day. I, like I said earlier, I'm taking on my, my supervisor's caseload while she's at ASHA. ASHA is a National Speech, Language, and Hearing Association and their annual conference this week. So she's going and I get to stay here and take over caseload. So it'll be a lot of different than patients that I'm normally seeing, but I'm super excited. I am gonna be covering the burn ICU, the trauma ICU, liver transplants, kidney transplants, um, and then, oh, like oncology. So it should be a fun uh, week. I'm also gonna still keep my trach patients since we're gonna need a little bit more help with um, some of our staff is still working on trach comps. So I'll still be in the medical world, medical ICU world working with my trach patients there. So it's gonna be a busy week, but let's go. So before you go into the burn unit, they have this little room uh, before you walk into like their main unit. That is a hand washing station. So here's a riveting video of me washing my hands. Um, you use a special soap and they just ask for you to clean your hands so that you're eliminating some of the germs that you're bringing into the unit. Since all these patients have open wounds that are getting healed, um, contact precautions are enforced throughout the whole unit. So it's just like an extra set extra safety measure we take. What a freaking day it has been. I just left the trauma ICU. So my day has consisted of two swallow studies, a follow-up in the burn ICU, a follow-up in the medical ICU, <laughs> and then a follow-up in the trauma ICU. Another follow-up wasn't appropriate, and then I had a new consult on the trauma med search. So I've had a day. It's like 11.30, I'm gonna go eat, write probably only one note and then go back out and see the rest of my patients. Goodness gracious, it's busy, but I'm having a good day and I'm learning a lot and it's nice to be challenged in going somewhere new. So that's the day, so far so good. Story of your life when you're in acute care SLP, you never know what's gonna bring to you. So here I am, I am working on some notes when my three or 130 small study just canceled on me. So instead of just wasting that time, I took advantage of it and spent some time reading notes and finishing up on those so I wouldn't have to do them at the end of the day. Sometimes in this case, I would just go back on the floors and see patients, but because I had another swallow study at two o'clock, I just made the most and decided it'd be most efficient for me to work on notes.
modified barium swallow studies are one of our instrumental swallow studies. Um, these happen quite often. We are very fortunate at my facility where I have a lot of access to them. So here I am just preparing for that swallow study. I give my patients barium contrast, which means before they come into the room, I kind of have to pour the contrast I anticipate needing so that it saves time while I am in the moment during the swallow study. So here I am just preparing the contrast. I am pouring all thin nectar and honey thick liquids because this patient previously had a swallow study and he aspirated all of those. So I was anticipating needed all of them. Sometimes I will only pour thin or nectar if I anticipate not needing honey. Um, just based off of the history of that patient. It's a case by case situation. I also pour a pudding consistency and then I grab a graham cracker if that's appropriate and then some spoons and straws if need be. survived today Woo! Wednesday is over oh my goodness honestly I thought I was so like I said earlier I was supposed to have four swallow studies and covering a ton of patients well my afternoon kind of went downhill my 130 swallow study got canceled because the nurse was at MRI and they were an IMC patient so an IMC and ICU patient needs to have their nurse come down with them to radiology and the nurse just wasn't available which normally they have other people cover but it was probably like a stat MRI, so they just couldn't come. Um, so that happened, and then I, had, I finished my notes while that while I was supposed to be seeing that patient. And then, oh gosh, okay, well, like I said, that 130 patient was canceled, and so then I had another small study at two. Um, and then I finished my notes while waiting for that second swallow study. That patient had myositis, which I'm gonna talk a little bit more about because it was a very interesting case and a very um, unique opportunity to work with that patient. So. I did that study at two, and then the rest of my afternoon kind of went downhill. I had another patient I needed to follow up for reassessment, but she got emergently intubated, and then I went to the burn ICU to follow up with another patient for dysphagia therapy, but he was in what we call the tank. Um, he was getting his dressings cleaned, and so I couldn't see him. Um, so my afternoon really just went downhill, which sometimes just happens in acute care, and so you kind of just have to go with the flow. Um, but that was the afternoon, nothing too crazy. I thought it was gonna be chaotic and I wasn't getting out to like 5.30, but now it's four and I'm going to go get margaritas with two of my coworkers slash really good friends from grad school. Well, I was gonna talk about myositis later, but I'm currently stuck in traffic going five miles per hour. So here we go, myositis, what is it? It's a rare disease, um, kind of a category of diseases and typically what it presents as is muscle weakness, um, aching and pain. So this patient in particular had it in, presented it in lower extremities, um, came to the hospital for other reasons and now they're doing workup for it. He also, once I started working with him, had reported changes to his vocal quality so his voice is very hoarse and high pitched not base baseline um dysphagia to solids denied dysphagia to liquids was reporting difficulties with solids more like broccoli and raw vegetables so they were getting stuck in his throat um 
subsequently when I took him down for a swallow study what I saw was that he was having a lot of pharyngeal um, residue issues pharyngeal stripping wave was reduced um, re and reduced UES distension were his two main pharyngeal deficits subsequently that resulted in a, a lot of residue on pudding consistencies and solid consistencies and then when liquid consistencies were presented the UES would um, wasn't fully opening so that the piriforms were filled up with the liquid. Uh, compensatory strategies at the stage that he was at were still effective, so he was able to clear uh, residue from solids with a sip of liquid and then followed by another dry swallow. It was kind of the strategy that I have planned for him and that I'm going to continue with him while he's here, um, but I anticipate that he needs continued swallow therapy and continue to be uh, evaluated and keep an eye on his follow status as he progresses with this disease. Good morning! It is 4.45, 4.46, way too early to be up, but I'm going to the gym. We're going to go head out and do CrossFit. Um, it is Thursday. I didn't really be, uh, record any more of last night just because I was hanging out with friends and then it was just time to go to bed. Um, but we are going to get this day started with a little bit of CrossFit and then go to work. Um, happy Thursday, everybody, and I'll keep you posted on how my day goes and what goes on today. All right, guys, I am back from the gym. I showered. I made my breakfast. I got it all packed up with my lunch and my backpack. I cleaned the house for a little bit. There's someone outside my car walking their dog. Okay. Um, I'm going to go to work. I'm going to start my day off with the chart review, and then I have a 9 a.m. swallow study that one that got canceled yesterday is rescheduled for this morning. He is a head and neck cancer, trach dependent. <clears throat> he has had chronic dysphagia for months now. I am not too optimistic that this is going to look any better, but we're going to go see what happens. I currently have these nice little burns on my neck. Yeah, because we did a lot of clean and jerks today at the gym with barbells, and now, like, I'm dealing with this. So, I promise they're not hickeys to everybody at work that I see today. I promise they're not hickeys. I just, CrossFit got me good. It happens. Let's go get Thursday done. Today I am calibrating an EMST expiratory muscle strength trainer 150 device for a patient that I have in the burn ICU. The EMST device has wonderful research behind it. Specifically, I am using this device to start training for building uh, cough and swallow muscles because this patient has been intubated for such a prolonged period of time. So the little blue box there is go inside is the EMST 150 device and this container behind it is what we is our container for a manometer. Our manometer will, calib will take the maximum expiratory pressure also maximum inspiratory but for expiratory muscle tra strength training we only focus on expiratory so MEP maximum expiratory pressure we have the patient blow into this device four times and take an average of their MEPS and then I take 75% of that average number to calibrate the EMST device there are tons of videos of this online EMST is wonderful and I super I support it for a lot of patients, especially in this type of setting. So I calibrate the device, I get the patient going and get him used to using the device. And that research suggests this device should be used with a rule of five. So five repetitions, five times a day for five days a week. Um, if they want to do seven, that's fine, but it's also more realistic for to just follow the rule of five, rule of five to have two rest days. So I went to the patient's room, I calibrated the device, I got them going on the device, I educated them on the device, and then I'm going to continue to follow up for both EMST therapy and then other swallow therapy to get them going before we um, provide a repeat instrumental swallow study for them. Alrighty, well I just left the trauma ICU. I am gonna head back across the street, go to my office, eat some lunch and write notes, and I have a small study at two. Um, but basically after I did RMST training and therapy, I came across the street, I had a new consult, and then I followed up with some liver transplants for therapy with them. And 
Now it's time to eat lunch. It's like 12.30 and I'm starving and I need food ASAP. And these are looking, they're not looking too hot. Hi, Ollie, hi, hi. Oh, oh yes, 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 Ollie, yes, yes, yes. Hi, hey, hey, hey sweetums. Anyways, I'm home for work and it's Thursday night and I went to Trader Joe's and I got some um, fun little Christmas snacky Ruiz, but I'm saving them for the weekend. So currently they're still in my car because if I know if I eat them, if I bring them inside, I will eat them. And I'm trying to not do that. So, but today was a great day at work. I am mentally exhausted. <laughs> But it was a good day. Um, I think my most interesting case is that I have this patient um, in the burn ICU that I actually met. Ollie, stop. Hey. Sorry, Ollie was attacking me. Um, and so I just came to the floor. I, what was I talking about? Oh, so the patient I saw today. Like I said, he, I met this burn patient back in January and worked with him for a couple months back then. And then I graduated and he got discharged a little bit after that. Um, he went to rehab and now he was back because his grafts needed some more work. And it was, it has been so cool to see how much he has progressed, progressed since I initially worked with him and we were doing work with him for, in his first admission for PMV. He was trick dependent, so PMB. Um, we also, I was suspecting a more a dysarthric and an apraxic component to like his language deficits. We were trying to do communication boards, but his arms are both like completely burned all the way up, and so he had very reduced movement of his arms. So communication boards weren't working well, um, and then we were also seeing him for swallowing. By the time he was ready for his discharge in his first admission, we had him on regular solids and thin liquids, but the speech and communication part of his deficits were still pretty prominent. And now I popped his PMV on today. My colleague has been working with him with PMV, but I put it on today for a swallow study and he was just talking and it was so good to hear his voice and so clear. And it's just... It's part of acute care where you're seeing them and then they get discharged and you don't really have closure on whether or not they progress even more on their deficits and whether or not their outpatient facility is continuing their gains or, you know, if they've been pretty stagnant and impatient, like, are they going to make gains as um, at their discharge facility? And so it was just so great to see that, like, he made so much gains from the speech and swallow perspective and he still has a lot of healing and his hospital course is so long and by no means is this done for his care but it was great to have a little bit of closure to say hey like we started this process and the slps at his discharge facility his other facility had just continued to great care and now he's just talking and communicating and it helped that his swallow study went really well so i was breaking his heart like i previously had um but that was today and I'm exhausted. So, I love my job, but I also love relaxing and digre digressing. I just said digressing. Um, I can't even think. I can't think of the word. Wow. Not digressing, not relaxing. I don't know. But I love chilling. So I'm going to go for a walk and do some self-care and just walk and get some steps in. My boyfriend and I also are now competing on who gets more steps in a day. And I must win today. So I'm going to go walk it out. Come back. And go to bed. Crazy Thursday for you. I hope you guys uh, like this first vlog back. And I will be better about posting again now that I'm managing my life a little bit more. So, I will be back. I promise I'm not going to abandon you guys for like three months like I did last time. And let me know some more content on what you guys want. I'm thinking maybe to even post like some short videos or taking some of your questions from the comments and creating a video off of that. Because a lot of them are asking about... um how to become like how to get to this acute care and I know I talked about my journey but also I think it could be beneficial to talk about like my opinion 
with regards to getting towards acute care work. So a little insight to acute care SLP. Thanks for watching guys.